All right. Um, so why don't you start by just telling us a bit about yourself, how you identify yourself, and um, and anything that people should know about you as sort of like a background information. Sure. So uh, I do identify as disabled from a cultural perspective, but also um, like uh, just like from a conditions point of view, I have uh, various conditions. So I'm blind and I have um, mental uh, health disabilities as well as chronic pain. So um, from that point of view, as far as conditions go, I very much identify with disability, but also culturally um, I've been involved in um, many forms of just like cultural work. So I'm also an artist and I perform and write um, poetry and personal narratives. And I've been doing that for quite some time now. Um, I work at the at the at UIC's Disability Cultural Center, um, which is like one of the few in the nation. Um, so I'm very excited about that. I was a co-creator of the center. So um, yeah, I that's pretty much who I am. I would say that also um, I did my undergrad and um, my master's and I'm working in my PhD program and all of that was done at UIC. So I very much feel connected to UIC. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, you talked a little bit about um, your art as well. Um, was that something you were interested in before you joined like the program or co-created the program center? Was that something you've yeah. been interested in your whole life? Um, it is. So English is my second language and I began just writing things for myself because I had a hard time talking. Um, it wasn't until maybe high school where I started actually performing my work and it started as community service. I was trying to do my service learning hours. Um, but uh, aside from that, I realized that I really liked it. At that point, I was thinking about like, oh, I wanna bring awareness about disability and stigma and things like that. Um, I think I've more moved from the process of awareness to a more like action oriented approach um, where I actually want to get in conversations with people about how do we change systemic ableism and racism and all these different kinds of um, systems that harm a lot of our communities and particularly impact the disability communities. So uh, does that answer your question? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, could you talk a little bit more about, because um, you, you talked about your journey through um, co-creating the program. Could you talk a little bit more about how your your personal journey with your own disability and how that has evolved and changed and from the start to where you are now? Yeah, um, so I would say at a very young age, I did um, meet people with my own condition of blindness. Um, I, but I very much didn't wanna associate with blindness. Um, I thought of it as more of something to overcome and so uh, I think it's become quite a journey to really shift from that perspective of like, not necessarily trying to overcome, but even accepting the fact that this was my daily reality um, and, and that it wasn't about overcoming, but rather like accepting and adapting and being okay with that. Um, but I would say that I've learned a lot through my years in, in this university, um, I would say, as part of uh, like my own college growth. Um, when I was an undergrad, there wasn't really a, a major or minor in my first years as an undergrad. Um, I think they were starting to be created maybe towards the end of my undergrad. Um, so I think um, just like try, I, I feel like I found a lot of community um, through my art. Uh, and in finding community, I think I started shifting my perspective and like recognizing that uh, there were people who were living happily and still accepting that there were some hard days and some things would really make you upset about your conditions, um, especially encountering a lot of stigma and things like that. Um, and but that was okay. Like you could you could be upset, you could be angry, you could be sad. And that's part of, of um, disability experience as well. And it's just as valid. So um, gosh, I had another thought, but it, I, I lost it. Um, yeah, uh, 
Um, I'm not sure if that fully answers what you were trying to get at. <laughs> I, I feel like I had, I was going somewhere and then I lost my train of thought. I'm oh, sorry. Not- Maybe I'll oh, come back oh, to you. oh, I know what it was. Um, basically, I was, I, I guess what I was saying is like, I started with my blindness, but even um, now acquiring even more disabilities, I realized like, wow, there's still some more acceptance and I'm st- I still have a lot more to learn and grow. And um, just because I accepted one thing doesn't necessarily mean that I've accepted everything that, that has come my way and that's okay. Like part of disability is, um, like also grieving what you like, what you don't have or what you could have. And um, it's not all like, like, I just wanna say like pride is really important, but it's not all about pride. And that has um, really changed my outlook on a lot of different things in my life. Yeah, and that idea, I think where that's, um, that sticks out that it's not all about pride. That idea isn't really reflected in a lot of, um, you know, dialogue about disability, there's a lot of emphasis on pride. Um, Where did you, when did you first start encountering that idea and how do you um, go about just, you know, like how did you start encountering that idea that it's not not all about disability pride? Yeah, I would say from a, from a theoretical standpoint, definitely in grad school, um, I would say from a more emotional and physical, like um, emotional and yeah, I would say almost physical standpoint, definitely in my own um, conditions. Um, And when I realized that like, I still held a lot of stigma around other people's conditions um, and I had to like kind of uh, unlearn a lot of that. And also um, uh, like meeting a lot of different people who have experienced a lot of traumatic events, Um, even like people that come to me where I work and just like, as as a person of color, like the ways that we see disability is very different from say a white person's perspective on disability. Um, Like, and I mean those like white perspectives of disability that have to do a lot with disability rights and such. Mm -hmm. So um, I would say like, for example, um, in my own experience, like uh, basically to put it in in shorter terms, um, disability, in my family was not the same as like coming into like a a white space and talking about disability. So I know a lot of people in my communities of color that are disabled, but would never identify as such. And there's a lot of systemic barriers for not identifying as such. So I guess that's where I think about pride and where it gets a little bit complicated. Um, Yeah. So yeah, you started talking about um, you know communities of color and the differences that you've um, seen in you know white communities and communities of color in their relation to the perspectives of disability. Could you talk a little bit more about what you've noticed um, in terms of the intersection between your experience with uh, being in a community of color and their perspective on disability? Yeah. So um, you know, I grew up undocumented. Um, I, I am an immigrant, uh, but I, I'm no longer undocumented. I have to say like, I, I, my immigration status has shifted to, um, naturalized citizens. So, um, for me, disability and, um, thinking about disability and communities of color, it was something that wasn't so readily talked about in the ways that I say, like, we talk about it. Well, I talk about it now, um, in terms of like uh, just being, um, because we didn't have the resources and the education, I think that's part of it. Um, And I think a lot of people in um, different communities of color that are disabled often still lack a lot of these resources and still lack a lot of providers who even understand disability from another perspective that is not the medical model or that is not like, sort of holding a lot of the um, prejudices or even maybe not a strong word, but like even a lot of misconceptions around disability, a lot of providers still hold a lot of the same ableism that is still prevalent in our society. So um, definitely I think that uh, that is that is still happening. That is part of why I, um, I, I, I very much enjoy what I work, where, where I work and what I, what I do and what I hope to do in future. 
Um, and just my own experiences have really kind of shaped my outlook and the many people that I've met along the way. And now um, the many people of color with disabilities that I know has drastically increased than the ones that I knew uh, from when I was younger. So mm -hmm. that was that was really um, an interesting take. And I and I just I often think about like uh, as I got older and I got more education, I became more exposed to more resources. Have you had any um, unique experiences relating to your disability while also being an immigrant? Uh, yeah, um, I would say it was harder when I was undocumented. I didn't, I had way less access to healthcare, um, way less access to a lot of, like I didn't think that I was gonna go to college um, because of like the financial um, hardships, but also because of um, you often have to get um, state funding to receive assistive technology and to be able to go to college. So it was something that I thought about pretty regularly because at school I was told like, you're gonna go to college, but um, really like no one told me how I was gonna make it. Um, so uh, um, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Oh, I was just asking about unique experiences between your intersection of being an immigrant and, you know, being disabled. Sure, yeah. Um, and then also, like, now that I'm older and I um, am a naturalized citizen, you know, it's still, there's still a lot of, um, I still come from a family that is mixed status. So meaning um, a lot of people in my family have shared different immigration statuses. Uh, so, I mean, that's still hard to think through. Um, a lot of people are also um, disabled in my family and might not identify as such. Um, and for me, at least, just all the rhetoric that has been um, around immigration and then the lack of talk about how this is a disability issue too has really been um, troubling. And so I often like want to uh, uh, bring those intersections uh, into into um, more readily into conversations and um, more, I guess, more um, prevalent in the ways that I also think about um, how I can better be a support or um, even an ally to certain, like, um, to now, like, people who are undocumented or have DACA or things like that. Um, so, I guess, um, yeah, I think about my positionality a lot and um, how I have privilege now, but um, I also know, know certain um, things that others might not know um, because I've experienced them growing up. So I often um, reflect on these things. Do you think there are any issues um, that immigrants with disabilities face, whether they be undocumented or documented, that immigrants with disabilities face when immigrating to this country that most people wouldn't know about? Yeah, I think there's a huge cultural shift. I still think that um, like in other countries, disability is still not looked at in the way that maybe the US um, has adopted. Um, also like just feeling like you even have the right to certain resources is still something that's really prevalent whether you're undocumented or not. So like being aware of, um, of like what is available to you, what you, what you actually can qualify for, um, the different cultural sort of um, ideologies that exist around disability, there still has to be like some, some sort of uh, like shift in perspectives um, and the ways that there's still, um, uh, I would say a lot of uh, um, various ways that traveling or like navigating society um, as an immigrant is still um, pretty, uh, there's pretty, there's, there's still like a lot of familial, a lot of societal attitudes and, um, and uh, uh, ways that, um, Sorry, I have I have I have uh, a lot of kind of brain fog because of my yeah. fibromyalgia. So 
That's okay. Please bear with me. <laughs> yeah, take your time. It's um, no problem. But yeah, like just the different ways that we we come to uh, associate ourselves and feeling at home is is really tricky. Um, and so um, I feel like I'm losing my train of thought. So I'll leave it there. <laughs> have you um, encountered any? Have you had any experiences or encountered a, a sort of culture shift when it comes to um, the popular thinking towards people with disabilities in the in your own communities of color or in your community of you know immigrants or your family? Um. Yeah, I would say you know there's still a lot of talk about language, um, and I think that's really interesting because of well, I speak Spanish, so it's very interesting and in thinking through the ways that. Um, people want to translate certain words like disability and even thinking through how do you translate like disability justice or like um, things like abolition and like disability rights just like things that are um, able to be translated I think are being talked about more um, I also still think that there's a lot of um, people who um, are in my community specifically where I live, there's there's still a lot of um, sort of education and resource sharing that isn't happening, particularly in the schools. Um, and the attitudes around disability might shift a little bit, but I don't know that I've seen a drastic, huge shift. Um, and so I remain hopeful, um, mm -hmm. but it's, it's uh, slow going, um, but I think that it's um, people who, people like me who share a lot of privilege and education and who have certain positionalities that um, it's sort of something that we have to um, like take on in the ways that we can and sort of continue, continue the fight. <laughs> How would you go about um, talking about the issue of having having um you know old-fashioned ideas towards disability that um someone might encounter within a community of you know immigrants because you've said that with your education and with your experiences over time that you've um you know fostered this very progressive and you know inclusive idea of disability how do you go about um do you think it's an education issue that is preventing people, some people within, you know, communities of color or communities of immigrants from accepting disability in a more, you know, inclusive way? Yeah, uh, I'm sighing because that's a really tough question. Mm -hmm. um, I sometimes wonder like what makes our way the right way, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so while I think we have a lot of great um, perspectives, I still question whether the way that I view things, the way that many of my uh, communities view things, um, whether they're necessarily the right way to view them. So I guess what I would answer is um, I'm trying to get to at least a point where um, things like the ways that disability is viewed is less harmful for the disabled individual and then you know, also less harmful for the policies that are made um, for, you know, um, certain, um, for that are like uh, made towards certain communities. So um, I also don't want to say that my view and a lot of my community views are the right way to view things. I think this is like, in, I'm in constant, um, like, it's, some, it's a constant tension. And I think that it's also a conversation that, um, you know, like sometimes I don't know that I'll ever be able to, to change like the world, right? Like as much as I would want. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I do think that um, that ableism, it is still very prevalent no matter what community it is in. And so just like, as we would fight any other systems of discrimination, um, like racism and sexism, um, for just for example, um, we should continue to 
um, dismantle ableism as well because they're all intertwined. Um, so I guess that's kind of where my mind goes. I'm sorry, I don't have a direct answer. Oh, no, that's okay. Um, as far as what, um, what advice you would give, I mean, what piece of advice would you give for a young person that belongs to the same communities um, that you do, that comes from the same, same background as you do, that has to now go through um, what you did? Was there, is there anything that you would want to tell a younger version of yourself or, you know, a young person going through yeah. things now? Yeah, so I would say for me, there was a lot of isolation, even within communities that I would belong to, because I often felt like, oh, they get this part of me, but not that part of me. Um, so I would just say, like, keep trying to find that community that fits you. Um, and if there's no communities that fit you, try to see if you can build your own. Um, it's really tiring and hard. Um, I personally, like, I love to join groups and such, but um, I also don't have a lot of energy. So if that's the case, then thinking through other ways that um, you could still get community um, and still be able to um, find yourself nourished by um, ideas that sort of speak to you. Um, for me, I think like writing and being able to read other people's work has been really helpful. Um, particularly on my really down days, um, which will happen. Um, it's just a matter of like who's there to support you. And um, if you are able to support others, that's great. Um, but like if, if the starting point is to support yourself, um, then that's a great way to start too. Yeah, all right, thank you. I also wanted to give you some time to talk about um, your current projects as well as any goals that you might have that um, short term, long term, or anything else that you're currently doing that you want to, you know, um, give a shout out to, bring some attention to? Yeah, um, I would just say, uh, I, well, I work at the UIC's Disability Cultural Center. Um, we have such great programming, a lot of program around, um, we have a specific, uh, I would say, program around community care, and that's really great. Um, so check that out. Um, I am one of the people that um, we, we I do check-in hours where you can reach out to me and it's just for like more one-on-one -on -one human interaction where we can talk about anything that feels relevant. So a lot of people come to me like with mental distress and we sort of work through that. A lot of people come to me for referrals. A lot of people also just come to like chat um, and talk about any microaggressions that go on. And this is for people who are both disabled and non-disabled. Um, and, you know, sometimes it's like family members, right? Um, mm -hmm. So I would just say like, I I'm available um, and the DCC is available for everyone. Um, also, I do a lot of my own writing, but I'm not published. Um, I do um, do like speaking engagements or um, poetry or, personal narrative sort of performances uh, upon request. So um, that's sort of where where I stand um, and just to like keep my energy at a good uh, good level. So mm -hmm. um, I appreciate um, you asking that and I appreciate the time that you've given to um, my, my ideas. I hope they came <laughs> through. <laughs> so thank you so much. Yeah, I think they came through very well. I wanna thank you again for the time that you've given us today and um, I'm sure that we'll, we'll send you the video once you make it. I'm sh uh, I don't want to take up any too much of your time. Um, so